Hello, in this problem we have a function, f of x equals the natural log of 5 minus x, and we want to express this function as a power series, and we want to find the radius of convergence of this power series. So we're going to start with another function. If you look at 1 over 5 minus x, and if you integrate this, you note that you're going to get negative ln 5 minus x. So the integral of this is almost this. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the power series for this function and then integrate it and try to come up with this function. So to do that, we're going to use another function, which is this one, because this is the one we know. If you have 1 over 1 minus x, this is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of x to the n. And this is true if the absolute value of x is less than 1. So this is the key formula that we're going to use. So again, you see this is your original function. You're trying to find a power series for it. You say, hey, wait a minute. What function kind of looks like this that's related to this one? Well, this one, because if you integrate this, you're almost going to get this. Okay, so now we need some clever manipulation of this in order to use this formula. So I am thinking uh, this 5 needs to be a 1, so what we can do is we can just pull out a 5 on the bottom, and so we get 1 minus x over 5. And now it fits this form. This whole piece here is our x. So this is equal to 1 fifth times the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity. And instead of x to the n, it's going to be x over 5 to the n. So this is x over 5 to the n. And this is valid if the absolute value of x over 5 is less than 1, right? In this case, it's x over 5. In this case, it's x. So this whole thing is our x. All right, so this is actually equal to, um, let's go ahead and bring that 5 in. This is the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of x to the n. And this will be 5 to the n here, but then we have a 5 to the 1 here. And so when you multiply 5 to the 1 times 5 to the n, you add the exponents, so you get 5 to the n plus 1. Okay, so this is 1 over 5 minus x. All right, so now what we can do is we can integrate both sides of this equation. And when you integrate this, basically you're going to use um, a u substitution. So I'll just go ahead and put the dx there so you see me do it. And you'll let u equal 5 minus x. And then so du will be equal to negative dx. There's no negative in the integrand, so you multiply by negative 1. And so this is going to be negative du, right? Uh, negative du, dx is negative du. And then over u equal to all of this stuff here. When you integrate this, you basically just integrate term by term. So you add 1 to the exponent and divide. So it'll be infinite sum, n goes from 0 to infinity. Uh, I'm going to write it like this, 1 over 5 to the m plus 1, x to the m plus 1 over m plus 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the c here, and we'll pretend that the c from this integral is being absorbed into this one. So this will be negative ln, uh, and then u, um, which in this case is 5 minus x. Okay, and that's equal to all of this stuff here. So we have the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of 1 over 5 to the m plus 1, x to the m plus 1 over m plus 1 plus c. All right, so I guess now what we can do is we can uh, multiply by negative 1. So when we do that, we get ln 5 minus x is equal to negative infinite sum n goes from 0 to infinity, 1 over 5 to the m plus 1, x to the m plus 1 over m plus 1, and then minus c. So we just need to find c. I guess to find c, what we can do is we can set x equal to 0, and that's okay because 0 satisfies this equation here. Right, so 0 is okay. It's in the interval of convergence. So if we set x equal to 0, we get the natural log of 5 equals, and then all of this is going to go away because we're just going to get 
um, zero here. The first term will be zero to the one, which is zero. So it's all gonna be zero. And then this is just minus C. So therefore C is equal to negative ln five. So plugging everything back in, we have the natural log of five minus X is equal to, when you put C equals negative five in here, there's already a negative. So it's gonna become a positive. So I'm gonna put it in the front, ln five minus the infinite sum as N runs from zero to infinity of one over five to the M plus one, X to the M plus one over M plus one. Kind of a interesting problem, requires a lot of knowledge. Um, this is typically something you would see near the very, very end of, of a Calc 2 course. So, um, and it's not a really hard problem, but it's certainly harder than the easier ones because again, you're given this function here and you're trying to find a power series for it. And this is basically the formula that you're given in most textbooks. So you have to use this to say, okay, well, if you have this and you integrate it, you almost get this. You actually get negative ln five minus X. So let's manipulate this and use this formula on it, which we did and we got this. Once you get this, you integrate both sides and then you get here and then here you solve for the value of C. And we chose zero because zero is a nice number and also zero satisfies this inequality, right? If I plot a zero here with the X's, I get zero over five, which is zero, which is certainly less than one. So there's no issues. And so that would be the final answer. Oh, we also want the radius of convergence. So we know that initially before we integrated, it converged here, right? For, for these values of X. So that means that this is true, right? So, um, so that means that this is true. So it's gonna converge everywhere there. And if you draw a little picture, here's zero. This is a power series centered at zero. And then here's five and here's negative five. And so the radius of convergence is this distance. So it's R equals five. The reason it's called radius is because if you look at infinite series in the complex plane, um, instead of it being an interval, it's actually a circle. And so you have that things converge in this, in this open disk or sometimes a closed disk depending on the problem. And so it's an actual radius. So when you deal with complex numbers, you actually have a radius that's equal to five. That's why it's called the radius. And in Calc 2, you have intervals, but you call it the radius anyways. Even though it's not really a radius, right? We still call it the radius of convergence. And that comes again from the fact that in higher dimensions or in complex variables, specifically complex variables, uh, it's actually a disk. So it is an actual radius, just extra life knowledge there. Yep, that's it. Good luck.